shuffled into the alley and over to the dumpster. He was obviously homeless. What with his tattered clothing, filthy gym bag stuffed full of all of his remaining earthly possessions, and the smell. The odor of months, maybe years, worth of dirt, grime, and body odor. It bothered him at first, the odor, but he'd gotten used to it. Didn't even notice it now. He ran his arid tongue across the scant number of teeth he had left. The slime of unbrushed teeth still troubled him after all these years. And he'd found out recently it was really hard to eat without most of your teeth. He'd managed to keep most of them up until last month. He didn't like thinking about the three men, or boys, they could have been boys, that had attacked him as he slept under the bridge. A couple of kicks to the face was all it took. He now was down to only six teeth. He poked the tip of his tongue into the holes in his gums, wincing as it hit the jagged remains of a molar. He deserved it. He deserved to live like this. Deep down in his heart, he knew that. What he'd done, that horrible, terrible, unforgivable thing he'd done, he deserved much worse. The slamming dumpster lid was sure to bring attention to him, attention in the form of trouble, but he didn't care. All he cared about right at that moment was getting those thoughts, those memories out of his head. He pulled on his knotted hair, the pain not nearly enough to abolish his thoughts. He drove his head into the rough brick of the wall hard enough to cause a wave of blackness to overcome him for a few seconds, but not hard enough to end his suffering, if even for a brief time. He deserved to suffer. That's the only thing that kept him from jumping off a building to end it all. He slumped to the ground, blood dripping down his face from the cut on his forehead, dripping into his gray, matted beard. The flood of memories was too much this time. He had no reserves with which to fight it off. He curled into a stiff ball and wept as images from that most awful day bombarded him. He hadn't been in a hurry. He knew how dangerous the big dump truck could be to others on the road. And he always drove with extra care when operating the behemoth on the streets. This day was no different. He was driving down a residential street headed to the end where a house was under construction. The speed limit was 25 miles per hour on this street, and he was cautious, driving between 15 and 20 miles per hour. He looked down at the paper sitting next to him to confirm the address. That moment of distraction, that was the single biggest mistake of his entire life. In fact, all other mistakes added together didn't even come close to matching this one gigantic mistake. The dog. Why couldn't it have been the dog? This thought haunted him every waking hour and most sleeping hours. He looked up from the paper just in time to see the dog dart in front of him. He hit his brakes, but stopping a six-ton vehicle, even a slow-moving one, took a lot of real estate. The dog, the stupid dog, made it across without a scratch. But the little girl, oh, the beautiful little six-year-old girl, had chased her stupid dog into the street, and she wasn't so lucky. He trembled his heart nearly exploding with each rapid beat as he exited the cab of the truck. For a moment, the last moment he'd ever feel any hope again, he thought he'd somehow missed her. Then, he saw her arm, so tiny, hanging out of the front wheel well. Oh no, oh please no, he yelled as he went to his knees beside the huge tire. He wished he wouldn't have looked, wished with every fiber of his being, but he did, and some things can't be unseen. They burn painfully into every synapse of your brain and they never go away. The girl, the precious little blonde-headed girl just two years younger than his own granddaughter, had been rolled up into the wheel well when the tire ran over her. She was torn apart. Her body was torn apart. He vomited. The scream started then. Her mother, her poor mother, she screamed as she tried to pull her daughter free, succeeding only in pulling parts of her daughter free. He must have been in shock when he stood and started jogging down the street, yelling for help, yelling for someone, anyone, to save the little girl, even though he knew there was no saving her. He cried for days without stopping after that. His wife and kids and friends and strangers all told him it wasn't his fault. It was an accident. The police didn't charge him with anything. It was an accident, they too said. His family tried to help him. He couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. He refused to drive. He would never get behind the wheel of any vehicle ever again. The sadness, the anger, the inability to interact with anyone, especially his loved ones, drove them all away. Finally, they all just let him alone. He was no better after a year. He was no better after two years. It took its toll on his wife, and when he saw the negative effects he was having on her, he left. He was sure she and the kids had searched for him for a while. He was just as sure that they'd given up on that search a decade or more ago. 
He opened his eyes when he felt something against his face. It was a stray dog licking the tears from his cheeks. When he looked at the animal, he didn't see the mangy street dog. Instead, he saw the little girl's dog, and he saw rage. The dog yelped as he grabbed it and flung it into the side of the brick building. Kicking the motionless dog, he screamed over and over, stupid dog, stupid evil dog. He screamed until his voice no longer worked. And then he slumped to the ground, unseeing, unmoving, unfeeling. Finally, his mind fractured into a million pieces, and he was able to rest in his insanity. Thank you.